Welcome to the screencast covering your first steps with Spark. In this screencast, we'll download and build Spark on a local machine and introduce the API using the Spark interactive shell to explore a file. Let's get started. Go to spark-project.org and click on the Downloads tab. We'll get the latest version, Spark 0.7.0. .0. I'm running on Mac OS X Mountain Lion, but since Spark is built using the JVM, it can essentially run on any platform, including variants of Linux and Unix, as well as Windows. But the process for getting going in Windows is a little different than what I'll walk through today. Next, let's untar the Spark distribution we just downloaded and view the README file where we can see the build instructions. I'm going to use a command line editor called Nano, but you can use whatever text editor you're comfortable with. Spark can be built using the Scala Simple Build Tool, or SBT. We find the command to run in the README under the section about building. That's SBT slash SBT space package. Also, notice that the README tells us we will have to have Scala 2.9.2 installed. And then we'll need to set up Scala Home as an environment variable to point to it. Let's leave the text editor and kick off the build. I don't have Scala on this machine yet, so while Spark is building, let's go download and install the version of Scala required by Spark 0.7.0. .0. Remember, the README said that we need Scala 2.9.2. .2. So let's go to scalaling.org and download it. From the scalaling.org homepage, click on Download Scala, scroll down to Previous Releases, and click on Scala. Dash two dot nine dot two dot tgz. Now let's untar that distribution of Scala. Now that we have the correct version of Scala installed, remember that the README instructed us to set Scala Home as an environment variable using the Spark configuration file. When we run Spark, it looks in the configuration directory called conf for a file called Spark env.sh. The download comes with a file called spark-env.sh.template, which we'll make a copy of and edit. Let's change the file to add a line to export Scala Home. Save our file. As an alternative to setting Scala Home, you can add Scala to your path. For example, on OS X and Linux, you can do this by editing a file called .profile in your home directory. Now we have our environment set up, let's see if Spark is done building. It looks like this is still working. Since it's going to take a few more minutes, we'll skip ahead in the video until it's complete. The build succeeded. For the rest of this screencast, I'm going to walk through just the first part of the quick start guide in the Spark documentation. Let's navigate there. Again, under documentation from the home page, click on your version of Spark and select quick start under programming guides. For now, we're only going to cover the basics from the section called interactive analysis with the Spark shell. Before we get started though, let's make one more change to our environment. Let's change the logging level used by the Spark shell to reduce the amount of log messages printed so that it's easier to follow along. Spark uses log4j, so it's easy to change the logging level. We simply create a file on the conf directory overwriting the defaults. To make it easy, Spark includes a template file which we can copy and edit. Open the file and simply change the log level from info to error. then save and exit the file. Starting now, I'm going to read directly from the quick start guide in the Spark documentation that we looked at earlier, so you can follow along there. Spark's interactive shell provides a simple way to learn the Spark API, and also acts as a powerful tool for analyzing data sets interactively. To start the shell, run dot slash spark dash shell from inside the Spark directory. 
Spark's primary abstraction is a distributed collection of items called a Resilient Distributed Dataset, or RDD. RDDs can be created from Hadoop input formats, such as HDFS files, or by transforming other RDDs. Let's make a new RDD from the text file of the readme in the Spark source directory. To do that, we're going to take advantage of a variable that's provided to us from the Spark shell called SC, which stands for Spark Context. The Spark Context variable provides a number of helpful functions, such as the one for importing a text file from either the local file system or HDFS. We'll declare a variable, which you do with the keyword val in Scala. We'll call ours text file. And we'll set it equal to SC dot. Remember, you can use tab completion in Spark the same way that you can in the Scala shell. So we'll use a function called text file on the SC variable, which takes the name of the file we want to import. Notice that this operation returns a new RDD of type string. RDDs have two fundamental types of operations. Actions, which return values, and transformations, which return pointers to new RDDs. Let's start with a few actions. We'll take our variable text file. Using tab completion again, we can look at the operations to choose from. One of the actions is count, which will simply return the number of lines in the readme, which is 68. Let's try another one. First, to grab the first line of the text file, which happens to be the pound sign, a space, and the word spark. Now let's use a transformation. We'll use the filter transformation to return a new RDD with a subset of the items in the file. Create a new variable, lines with spark. This time, we'll use the filter function, which takes an inline function, or a lambda, we're going to filter based on lines that contain the word spark. Notice this returns a new RDD since it's a transformation of type string. We can chain together transformations and actions, so taking something similar to what we just did, we chain together the filter and the count to know that we have 12 lines that contain the word spark. Now, feel free to pause the screencast and explore the API on your own. Remember to use tab completion to see what functions are available. Congratulations, you're now using Spark. In this screencast, we downloaded and built Spark on our local machine, and we took a quick peek at the API by using the interactive Spark shell to explore the Spark readme file. In our next screencast, we'll take a quick tour of the Spark documentation available online. In subsequent screencasts, we'll pick up from here and finish walking through the quick start guide in the Spark documentation. We'll cover writing standalone Spark applications, deploying Spark to a cluster, and many other advanced topics. We look forward to seeing you then. Signing off now, enjoy Spark.